Hello, hello. I wonder if I say that about 500 more times if that would make the intro more exciting or less exciting. Would just be like, hello, 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 hello. <sighs> Probably not. This is Hayden and welcome to my channel. Today I'm talking about something that I did a little while ago. I know I've shared some videos on here about how scared I was to scuba dive and get certified for scuba certification because I believe it's called thalassophobia. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but afraid of the ocean and basically afraid of really deep parts of the ocean because when I'm on the surface, I feel like things are just gonna kinda you know, I know I'm not alone with that, and I know that a lot of people have reached out to me asking me how it went, why I haven't gotten an update, and to be completely honest, the filming process was really hard for me going through and capturing what it was like to be certified because I wasn't allowed to have my camera on me. And when, with all of the COVID protocols, I wasn't able to have anybody else there with me for the pool sessions that could maybe film or take pictures while I was in the water because Kyler, my boyfriend, was in the water with me and we couldn't really organize that and when we were in our open water dives we actually weren't allowed to bring our underwater camera our gopro with us in the water because they wanted us focusing on training actually another actually we weren't even allowed to be in the same training group because they want us to focus they wanted us to focus solely on learning the skills and making sure that we were able to complete the skills and get certified before we dove our final dive which was more of an exploration more of a tour with our family or with the person we got certified with so all in all I will say that that third and final dive which I'll get to was really interesting because it was the first time that I dove with Kyler but kind of starting from the beginning how it started was we went and we had to show proof of our negative COVID test within the we had to show a negative rapid test or we had to show a proof of vaccination to get into the pool we went to a pool in Bellevue Washington which is a beautiful city they have one of the coolest looking malls <laughs> malls that's all glass it is so cool if you haven't been there going to their downtown mall it's so luxurious it makes you feel so fancy and around the holidays it is so pretty we went to a pool in Bellevue and for the first day we basically talked about putting on the gear and taking the gear off. We got in the water and we were able to swim around a little bit and we did mask one, two, and then we did regulator one, two, and then we did mask three. Excuse my dog from barking. She went to the vet this morning and they trimmed these mats that she had behind her ears and she's been absolutely grumpy ever since. During the pool day, mask one is essentially where you take your mask and you fill it up halfway with water, put it back on, and then you press against the top of it and blow out of your nose so that the water comes out. I don't know if I just didn't really think about it, but before I did the training and the e-learning part of it, when we were just learning, when I was just thinking about the idea of scuba diving, getting water in my mask was something that I was nervous about. And I guess as a swimmer, I just assumed that I would pop my head above the water, get the water out, and then put it back on. But obviously you can't do that when you're 60 feet under the water because it's extremely dangerous if you were just like, let me just swim to the surface really quick to clear my mask and then put it back on. So when you're under the water, you can actually clear and get the water out of your mask without even having to go up to the surface and without a whole lot of hassle. The second mask two that we learned was where you had to take your mask and fill it all the way up with water and then show that you could clear it so that they, you know, show that you could get all the water out, which took a couple seconds. And it, something that I struggled with a little bit while we were going through was because I'm a nose breather through and through. Everything that I do, I breathe through my nose. If you're the same way, let me know about down below. Mention it in the comments if you're a nose breather or a mouth breather. And while I was swimming, I would find me subconsciously breathing in through my, ma my mouth and then breathing out through my nose. So then it would kind of pop open my mask like as if I was clearing it, but then some water would get in and then it would get a little bit irritating, a little bit frustrating. So then I had to kind of consciously remind myself to breathe through my mouth the whole time and not my nose unless I had water in my mask. The third, so we did mask one, which was fill it up halfway, mask two, which was fill it up all the way. Mask three is where you take off your mask, do a little dance, just kidding, no little dance, but you take off your mask all the way from your head and then you have to put it back on underwater and then clear it whether, you know, however, however you do it and however you, I keep, I'm hitting my forehead so hard that it's giving me a red spot. <laughs> 
a little excited. So that's pretty much the three things that we did for the masks, which was really helpful because it's very different from when you're learning about it to when you're actually doing it yourself. The second kind of part of the first pool day that we did was we, I'm trying to remember, the second part, the regulators. So you have your regulator and then you have your secondary, your octo, which is basically, you have one that you have in your mouth the whole time and then you have one that's kind of on your side to where if anything happens to yours, your primary source, or if something happens to the buddy that you're with, you're able to share with them. And essentially what we had to do was do the, the different ways to clear it because if it falls out of your mouth and into the water, it kind of automatically fills up with water a little bit. So what ended up happening is we did the first one where you basically take it out of your mouth you put it back in and as you take it out you're blowing bubbles always blowing bubbles and then when you put it back in you have to save enough air to be able to to purge it is what it's called where you really hard and it gets all that water out and then you are able to inhale exhale and you're good to go the second one that we did was you take it out blow your bubbles and you put it back in and then you push a purge button that essentially shoots some air automatically so that you don't have to yourself we did that and then we did one where we basically had to do like a rescue ascent so with our buddy we had to do an out of air situation to where you find your buddy you say i'm out of air they basically give you their secondary and then together you help each other come up to the surface so that if it, the ever if the situation ever happened heaven forbid in real time and in, in actually in open water that you would know how to do it that's essentially what we did other than getting kind of the weights down because with buoyancies you have to make sure that you're able to do that. I did a lot of swimming around. Something that I will say is that with how big the fins are, they kind of made my knees sore from how I was kicking. And excuse me, even now my knees are still a little sore. So I would say that that's something to be prepared for depending on what kind of fins that you get and how you're kicking to be a worry that your that your knees might be a little bit sore so if you have really bad knee problems obviously there are a lot of medical forms that you have to fill out so if your knee problems are bad enough you'd have to get them checked regardless before you decide to scuba dive but for me i don't really have a lot of issues with my joints and that's something that i did notice is that my knees were kind of sore Moving on to our third pool day, which is the day that we chose, my boyfriend and I chose to upgrade to the dry suit suit. We were originally just gonna get open water certified in our wetsuits and it, the water is 51 degrees. Kind of ranges between 48 and 52. Um, year round in the Puget Sound and where we live is right next to Elliott Bay, which is one of the places that we ended up going scuba diving was right in this area. So instead of just sticking with the wetsuit, we decided to upgrade and get a dry suit certification, which is essentially like an astronaut suit. The zipper that they use on the dry suit that we used is a very similar, almost the same, obviously not exactly the same to the kind of zipper that they use with spacesuits with the suits that astronauts wear. So uh, essentially I'm a certified sea astronaut in case anybody asks. But basically what it is, is it's an outfit. It's kind of like a one piece, like a suit that you would wear and it keeps you dry. As long as all of the seals are in place, you essentially have silicone seals that you put around your wrist, so it's tight around your wrists, and around your neck it's tight, and the water will kind of pool around it, but it doesn't go inside. And then you wear, because it has kind of like a sock type at the bottom on your foot, still dry, you put a pair of socks over it, or under it, and then you put a pair of shoes on. And that way your shoes slide right into your fins. There are some people who have to get a different size fin because of how big or how small the shoes are when you're wearing your dry suit. But the only part of me, other than a tiny leak that got my sock wet while we were in the open water, the only part of me that leaked or that got wet, I should say, because that was the only part that leaked, wore my hands because I had wet gloves on and my hair because I had a wet hood on. But everything else, I wore two pairs of thermal leggings, a pair of leggings, I wore two long sleeve thermal shirts, and then I wore this fuzzy fleece one piece that essentially went from my ankles all the way up to up here and all the way down my arms. And when I tell you I was sweating like a sinner in a church before we even got 
got into the dry suits, it was so nice to get into the water because it was warm. And then obviously after a certain period of time, because water is so good about pulling heat away from your body, I did end up getting a cold not getting a cold but just getting chilly in the water and being in the Puget Sound being where we were the water is really cold and the air outside was really cold the second day was actually pouring rain the entire day so no matter where you were in the water above the water you were cold what was nice about the third pool day that we had kind of getting back on track from all the tangents that I'm going on right now is that that day was specifically set for getting a feel how you are in your wetsuit to make sure if they needed to add more weight because wetsuits create more of a buoyancy not to mention when you are dry suits not to mention when you're wearing a dry suit you actually have an additional hose that hooks up from your cylinder from your BCD that you wear the the kind of vest style that you wear it hooks up into the dry suit because you actually can fill up your dry suit with air because as you know when you go deeper things get smaller things compress so as you go down the dry suit will squeeze you and there have been people who have lost their lives because of the squeeze is what they call it so you fill up the air as you go down and something that we practiced was how to do that what happens if you're there you have air and all the air goes to your feet and you flip upside down and your feet go up and you start going up to the surface how to fix that how to get rid of that we kind of went over a lot of the worst case scenarios and once we, they were comfortable with that that brought us to our first open water day which we did on a saturday and what we did was we drove up about an hour away from where we live in downtown seattle up to a place called muckleteo or they call it t-dock in the diving community which i'm a part of now and what we did was the first time that we got in the water it was terrifying you guys my thalassophobia or whatever you call it oh my goodness i almost couldn't get into the water because of how scared i was but i did it i got into the water and the first time that i put my face in the water because keep in mind at this point when i first got in i was still kind of sweaty from standing up on the surface with all the clothes, the layers that I had. So when I got in, it was kind of nice and relaxing with the coolness of the outside bringing me, cause I wasn't getting wet other than my hands. It was just kind of different. It was so strange. And then when I put my face in the water, it was like an instant brain freeze. Oh my goodness, it was so cold that I couldn't even imagine what I would have gone through if I chose to just do the wetsuit certification. My, It gave me an instant headache and it kind of put me off right away because I was thinking, gosh, I'm already scared. I'm already hyperventilating a little bit and now I have a headache. I don't think I should do this. I don't think I can do this. So I looked at my instructor and he was like, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm feeling really stressed out. And I started feeling really emotional because everything was kind of happening all at once. And added on top of that, I felt a little embarrassed because nobody else seemed to be having an issue with it so he ended up sitting me down we took a few minutes I mean like 10 minutes and he just sat there and, and helped me work through it making sure that this is something that I want to do making sure that I know that he's going to be right there with me the entire time and honestly if I had a different instructor just watching how the instruct different instructors were teaching their styles and how they helped their students I don't think that I actually would have been able to go through with it had I not been with the instructor that I had so I think it's amazing that the company that I went through silent world diving systems has so many different types of instructors and they essentially part us perfectly even though I'm pretty sure it was kind of random the first time that I went down the first time that I descended we swam out to a buoy that was probably I would say maybe 30 yards 30 meters or so from the shore give or take a little bit and essentially what they did was they had one of the instructors dive down with a string attach it to the bottom to the floor and then it was attached to a buoy that was floating letting people know in surrounding areas that there were divers in the water what we did was we swam out to the buoy and then once we got there we descended to about 25 feet i believe it was around there and when i first started going down the visibility was not good because it was low it was low tide the tide was coming in so towards the end of the day it got better but when we first went down it was all green Everywhere around me was kind of that mossy, thick green. I couldn't see anything around me. I couldn't, I could barely see my hand in front of me. All I could see was this yellow string that I was sliding down. And he told me to go slow because there was my other buddy coming down with me. And I was just sitting there. I couldn't see anything, couldn't see beneath me. And all of a sudden, I look up and I don't see anything above me. I don't see the buoy. 
my heart rate starts getting really loud not really loud but really fast I could hear it in my ears and all and I'm like am I even moving am I standing still I literally looked to the rope and all I could see was that my hand was sliding down so I thought to myself okay I just took a huge deep breath I kind of squeezed on the rope a little bit and I was just like you just need to make sure that you're kind of just sculling just kind of stay in a place my instructor came down grabbed me pulled me back up slowly obviously because my buddy was having issues clearing her mask so she couldn't go down right away and that's why I felt like I was kind of in limbo we end up going again I went down first again got all the way down to the bottom and I was like <sighs> trying to breathe I was trying to take full breaths full deep breaths but it's kind of hard when you're really scared and really nervous going down the first time and once we got to the bottom I could feel how cold it was and that I was very aware all of a sudden of my surroundings and it was really scary for me because the first instinct that I felt was this is uncomfortable I want to go back up to the surface but being 25 feet under the water it's not safe to just swim right up so I sat there and I had to just remind myself to keep breathing once my buddy got down I uh, we started looking around a little bit. He goes, okay, you two go swim a little bit together, kind of on the pool. We then had to do the mask one and two that I talked about a little bit earlier, where we had to fill our mask up halfway and then all of the way, and then show that we could get the water out. We had to do that while we were under the water. And then also the regulator stuff, making sure that we knew the different ways that we could clear and purge the water from our regulator. And also we had to do the buddy emergency out of air situation in the open water and touching on the scary side of things for me because I know that in the original video that I shared I showed that I was really terrified of getting eaten of seeing scary things and freaking out of not being able to breathe and while I was down there it was so surreal because it didn't really feel like what was happening what was happening <clears throat> I don't know if that really makes a whole lot of sense but as I was down there I was thinking to myself literally equally on one hand oh my gosh this is the coolest thing I've ever done this is the biggest starfish I've ever seen in my entire life these shrimp look so different from the shrimp that I put in my mouth and on the other hand I was thinking oh my gosh this is literally the scariest thing I've ever done I'm so scared for my life right now because I couldn't make it I couldn't make it to the surface if I couldn't, if I stopped, if my cylinder weirdly got, got cracked or if something crazy happened, totally unreasonable happened and I ha and I couldn't breathe, I don't think I would be able to make it to the surface all by myself. Now, I wasn't alone, right? If I did run out of air, obviously my buddy could have, we could have done the emergency that we went through, that we learned, or... My instructor could have done that with me. There were two different people there that could have helped me if I had a no air or low on air situation. And the most important thing when you're scuba diving is to make sure you can breathe. If you can breathe, then you can fix all the other problems, right? If you can breathe and your mask broke, you can still make a safe ascent. If you can breathe and you lost your buddy, you can still make a safe ascent. You can still enjoy somewhat your dive or you can still survive and for me it was just thinking constantly of all of the things that could go wrong and how and consciously thinking about how cold my face and my hands felt that to be completely honest I didn't really have that enjoyable of a time the things that I got to see when I was at the bottom were super cool and I got a little distracted a few times by how huge they were like this big the starfish were that were hanging around the poles that were on this pier that we were by but all in all, it was fun. And when I got out of the water, Kyler, my boyfriend, looked at me and was like, you don't look happy. And outside, I was like, of course I'm happy. That was, you know, the coolest thing I've ever done. But in my head, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to do this again tomorrow? I don't know. I had to, I was thinking on the drive home and as we were talking about it, because there were some crazy things that happened. One being you have mouthpieces that go onto the regulator because obviously we were renting it and mine got twisted so when I was 30 feet under the water 35 feet under the water I went to take a deep inhale and water came in with the air and I choked a little bit I tried to do it again well after you know get make sure there was no water I took a deep breath in and water came in and so I looked at my instructor and I was like I can't breathe I switched to my backup which was fine he fixed the first one and I was fine but just for those few seconds I thought to myself okay how am I going to be able to do this without my instructor there I don't like I don't think I'd ever feel comfortable at this point I was thinking I don't think I'd ever feel comfortable doing this with just Kyler and I needless to say 
I don't want to deter people from saying, you know, I hated it. I didn't hate it. It was just not what I was expecting. I knew that I was going to be nervous. I already told you guys, we talked about this, that I was scared and I had experienced a lot of the fears. Obviously not the getting eaten by an orca part, but we did see a lot of um, seals kind of swimming around before we went in. Didn't see any while we were in there, but we came up, we got everything off, we drove home. I was super tired. The next morning we woke up and we went to a different place in West Seattle, which was a lot closer. It took us like 10 minutes to drive there, which was great. We pulled up, we got in, it was raining, it was windy, and when we got in the water, it was completely different. It was freezing. The water was freezing. And even though I was dressed in multiple layers, I was still kind of cold. But when we went down the second time, we the drills that we did, which would have been considered our third open water dive, was we had to show that we could a tire driver, driver, <laughs> diver. So for example, my buddy said, I'm too tired to swim. So I had to show that I could effectively push her, pull her with many of the different movements that they teach you in our training so that I could push her to safety if that was the case. And then we also had to show that we could help our buddy get rid of a cramp or get rid of a cramp by ourselves, which is essentially where you just pull the top of your fin and pull it back until you feel your, your gastroc your muscle your calf muscle release and and loosen out and then we went down and this dive site was different because it it was open but not as much as the other site was it didn't get as deep as fast I think I, w I would like to say but as we were down there we saw a bunch of crab we saw a bunch of we saw a lot more fish I actually saw three different toilets and the only thing that I wanted to do was sit in the toilet and have somebody take a picture of me. And if that doesn't, you know, if that's not embarrassing, I don't know what is. But we did two dives where we did skills for our certification. We had to show that we could do the calf release, the tired diver, kick, pull, swim. And we also had to show that we could take out the hose to our dry suit, put that back in underwater. And we had to show that if all the air went to our feet, we could flip ourselves upright and release the air so that we didn't have any danger of going up to the surface. The third dive that we did was our final dive. And <sighs> gonna get comfortable for this one because they let me partner with my, my boyfriend, Kyler. They let us be buddies on this third and final dive. And uh, I, <laughs> so uh, we had, I mean, obviously relationship statuses weren't brought up during our training, but Kyler and I have been dating for several years. And my instructor was like, Hayden, where's your husband? You get to be partnered with your husband on this dive. And I was like, oh, mm, where's my husband? I get to be partnered with him on this dive. So then Kyler came over and I was like, did you hear what he said? And he says, no, what'd he say? And then my instructor came over again and he's like, oh, Kyler, perfect. I was just telling Hayden she gets to partner with her husband on this dive and I didn't know where you were and here you are. And I look over at Kyler and I'm like, hmm. And it was a laugh. We had a lot of fun. There were a few people on the last dive that ended up seeing some, uh, that ended up seeing the seal dive and swim right beneath them. We didn't get to see that, but diving with Kyler was so different than diving with the buddy that I previously had. The buddy that I previously had, I felt like I had to make sure that they were okay, but it, the roles were kind of reversed for me and Kyler in a way that I knew that he's a competent swimmer, and I knew that he's competent with the knowledge. Not that my buddy wasn't, but just because I know Kyler so much better, I felt so much more comfortable swimming along with him the only thing that we wish was a little bit different was one that we could have brought our camera we wish that we could have brought our camera and two we wish that we would have gone a little bit slower they treated it kind of a kind of as if it was a tour where they do they often have instructors with beginner divers go out and do tours in the area because you get to see a sunken ship you get to see a bunch of other really cool stuff and multiple toilets so we went around and we were trying to get everywhere that we could on the amount of air that we had and everything was kind of sped up a little bit so i think that when kyla and i go back because yes the second day was so different that it was so much more enjoyable and by the end of it, I couldn't believe that it was already over and that we had to actually leave, right? I wanted to go back in for a fourth dive. But all in all, something that I'll say is if you are someone who, like me, is afraid of the ocean or 
if you're someone who you tried scuba diving and after the first couple lessons or maybe after the first open water dive you were you thought to yourself I cannot do this there's no way it's too scary it's too nerve-wracking Kyler is somebody who loves the ocean he scuba dives not scuba dives he snorkels everywhere he would probably snorkel around the world if he could he went to Hawaii right after high school and snorkeled everywhere he loves snorkeling and he was scared the first day that we did open water he was nervous so if that's something that made you stop please try again because I am living proof that you can be so scared of it but never done it before and then you get in it's so different it was so amazing it was so cool you look at it you go to an aquarium okay and you look in the tanks at all the rocks and how everything flows and how all the fish swim together and you think to yourself wow i wonder what it's like in the wild you know like in the ocean do they swim like that in the ocean does it look like that in the ocean it looks just like that i felt like i was almost in a simulation it didn't feel like it was real and the craziest thing is with the dry suit we went 55 feet under the water or maybe a little bit more shallow than that and we came up dry we came up dry and I'm so excited because like I mentioned on my social medias, my name, it's my name, Hayden Burton underscore. That's it on TikTok and on Instagram. I am planning a trip to Mexico and in Mexico we will be going diving. We know for sure that we're going to do two dives, but we're going to see if there's any way we can work out doing a couple more. We just have to plan it around with our flights and with the other activities that we're doing. But when we're in Mexico, not only will we not have to wear a dry suit or the thermal layer or the long johns or the or the fleece onesie, we'll just have to wear, we're just going to be wearing our suit and a rash guard and then the gear because it's going to be, the water is 80 degrees. We got certified in 51 degree water and we are going scuba diving in Mexico in 80 degree water. It's going to be so different. I'm going to be able to bring our GoPro with us and our other camera equipment and we're going to film it all. It's going to be amazing and I'm going to share that here. Over the next couple weeks there are going to be lots of videos coming up where I'm going to be talking about what I'm packing because I had no idea so much goes into international travel. So if you're interested about that, head over to my channel. The next couple videos, like I said, they're going to be all about that. You can go head over and watch the episode that originally started this, which was me announcing that I'm going to be doing my adventure bucket list and I'm going to start tackling the items and start taking it more seriously scuba diving is officially checked and i'll see you guys next time